Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and this is another tutorial on cloth. So last tutorial, we went over how to create a regular cloth draping around a table. And this time I wanted to show you how to control your cloth just a little bit more so that uh, you can be able to like to hang it. So let's say for example, in this cloth, uh, you'll notice it's just a regular rectangle and it has some pretty good geometry. So what I want to do is make it feel like it's going to be draping over some poles. So for example, let's make the pole. So I'm going to create this little guy right here. And I personally do like to give this just a little bit of subdivisions so that uh, the geometry won't fall through it. And I'm going to make it just a little bit thicker here. Rotate it 90 degrees. And I wanted to drape on this, and then I also want to cling onto this, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get this a little closer. Move this over here. All right. So now that we have the scene set up, I'm going to go to FX, and let's go to End Cloth and choose Create End Cloth. So like we mentioned before, it automatically adds a nucleus, which is basically gravity, and then the cloth system itself. So once I press play, it's going to re uh, fall. But notice that it doesn't interact with these two objects. And the reason why is because we have to make these passive. So let's grab this one, go to end cloth, create passive collider. Then we'll grab this one as well and go to end cloth, create passive collider. We're going to rewind and play, and now the cloth, the cloth is interacting with it. Notice how low my, well, first of all, it's now sliding, but notice how low my poly got, even though I felt that my geometry was actually pretty high, I'm still getting a little bit of that um, jaggedness that comes with low polygons, but we'll work with what we have. All right, so now how do we get it to actually cling to this one? So for example, I really want this area to be stuck to this. So what I'm gonna do is use a constraint. Let's go ahead and right click, go to vertex, select all of these vertices, and then shift select the pole that you want the cloth to attach itself. Under end constraint, there's something called point to surface. When you click on that, you're gonna notice that your vertices are now pointing towards this pole. And then when I rewind and play, it's going to hold on and then kind of give you that draping feel. And of course this is starting to fall, but now you have kind of like a curtain. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more time here. Press play kind of hit each other it kind of starts sliding away and then we can kind of get a nice little drape so if you wanted to create a tapestry this would be a perfect way to do it but I really want it is to actually cling onto this so I'm going to move this pole and uh, I'm also going to increase the friction so open up the attributes uh, take a look at its um, rigid shape and I'm going to also increase the stickiness just a little bit. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the cloth itself. So if you need to find it, let's go to display shapes, open up the display shape. There's the output cloth. Here's the rigid body one. Here's the rigid body two. And here's the cloth itself. I'm going to scroll up and increase the friction. Then rewind and play and see how it works. All right. So that's looking a lot nicer. So now if I press the number six, I now have textures. I, ass I assigned a texture earlier and I just wanted to uh, kind of make a tapestry of, of uh, my logo so that it looks like I'm going to be advertising at a convention someday. We'll see. Just fantasizing right now. But I'm going to move this again just to see if I can get a better reaction. Press play and then rewind. Rewind and press play. So now I have a nice end cloth effect. It's getting attached using constraints to the vertices towards this passive, uh, passive body. And then we also have this guy who also has a passive body. The other thing I wanted to show you is a couple of little fun things that you can do with the nucleus. The, nucle the nucleus has gravity and gravity is at 9.8. If I change this to, um, let's say, well, we can just do negative 9.8 rewind and press play, the gravity is going to take this and bring it up. So gravity is going the other way now. So that's something to play around with if you want to, but I'm going to put that back into uh, 9.8. And the other thing I wanted to show you is called wind speed. 
So wind speed literally means that I'm pressing play because you can actually see this in, um, in action is you can actually increase the wind speed and it will start making it look like there's actually wind flowing in the air. So now my convention is outside and it gives you this really nice, and again, I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to increase my time by 500 and it gives you a really nice feel of which of the wind and how it's working. So what's nice is that I have my wind speed here and I can actually increase it dramatically and I can get instant effect now because it's, it's very sticky, both the cloth and the, Pull, you're getting this kind of interesting uh, effect. So there's a lot of, it's probably a little windy. I don't want to be outside. So uh, let's go ahead and rewind or reduce the wind speed and maybe rewind and just play again. The wind direction, anytime you see three numbers, is usually X, Y, Z. So the wind is blowing in the X. If you wanted it to blow in the Y, for example, you can actually increase uh, the Y and then it will start blowing a little bit upward as well. So again, the friction is pretty strong. So that's one of the reasons why you're not seeing too much of an effect. But if I change this to zero and maybe increase the wind speed, you can see now that it's really starting to push upward. So there's a lot of really fun things you can do with, um, with wind and, and cloth. So I wanted to demonstrate that part. I also wanted to demonstrate wind noise. Notice the pattern. You can, act, you can kind of break up the noise and give it a little bit more irregularity if you increase the wind noise. So now we're getting a little bit more uh, movement to, with the dynamic wind. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed that little um, tutorial on how to create uh, cloth. We use end constraints. We use passive bodies. We controlled our dynamics and, of course, the very cool and fun gravity and wind. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. You can always leave a comment or message below if you have any suggestions. Have fun playing with end cloth and don't forget to mess around with all the presets. So again, don't forget to check out academicphoenixplus.com. We have some free downloads, some free ebooks, and, um, and a newsletter if you want to keep up with what I'm doing. Thank you so much for all of your support. Keep creating and I will see you next time.